Hey there guys. I did a video about public domain images, free and legal images that you can use and it was pretty well received. Got a lot of good feedback, a lot of good comments. So I wanted to do a follow-up with five more resources that you can use for your commercial print-on-demand business. So whether it's Redbubble, TeePublic, it can be frustrating that you're looking through images and you're wondering, am I allowed to use this? Am I not allowed to use this? It could be, you know, whatever you're searching for. So I've got five more resources that you can use. Hopefully you'll find it helpful. Let's go. Okay, the first resource that I want to share with you guys is called Raw Pixel. Okay, so the website is www.rawpixel.com. You can also find it pretty easily. When you go into Google, just type in Raw Pixel, and that'll be the first one that comes up. Free stock images, vectors, and PSD mockups. Now, right at the top, there's a public domain section. So you could click on that. You could also start searching. I'm going to do it both ways here. I'm going to click on public domain to start. So at the top, and we can see that we've got different categories or you can just scroll through all and you can see here there's different collections of things so I'm just gonna click one at random here uh, let's scroll on down here oh here we got a giraffe okay so I'm gonna click on the giraffe one and so these are free public domain images and this is 1892 edition of this incredible book and these are pictures of animals beautiful illustrations of animals plants really cool these are high quality. Let's pick on this toucan bird here. I'm going to click on him and we can see it says free public domain CC image. Now there's a JPEG and it even gives you the size, which I really like because it gives you the pixel size. So, you know, if you're dealing with a nice, you know, big, high quality picture. So that is a awesome, I think an awesome resource. Now, again, that, that's one way to do it. Okay. So you could go up to, I'm just going to click on this little link up here. Raw pixel takes me back to the beginning. And I can click on public domain. Okay, so that's what I did before. Or I can just start searching. So I'll type in cat. That's my go-to. And it gives me a bunch of cat images. But there's also the public domain filter here on the right-hand side as well. So I can click on public domain. And that will give me public domain images specific to my search. So again, I mean, if you love vintage, I, I happen to. I really like vintage drawings. I do a lot of like funny t-shirt designs and what I, I find is that vintage designs sell. You know, people like something that looks professionally illustrated. So here's a great way that you can find a professionally illustrated, you know, many different types of professionally illustrated drawings. They don't have to be funny, but you know, if you're looking for something that's professionally illustrated, this is the way to do it. And there's just, you know, hundreds and hundreds. Again, I'll just do another quick search here at the top and I'll just type in dog. Here we get a bunch of dogs and I have this public domain filter checked. If you click it again, it just uncheck marks it. So you just check it again and then you've got a bunch of public domain images. So if you're worried about ever, you know, stealing somebody's results, you know, stealing somebody's designs, just click on the public domain. And then if you're still not sure, because I know some people are pretty nervous about this stuff, Let's click on, say, the dog here and the horse. When I click on it, it'll give you a little bit of background, which is nice. And then it says free public domain. View the license. You can also view the license. We have made this image available for free to the public domain. You can also click on the little eye. So again, there's lots of information here for you. It doesn't just say it's public domain and you're like, well, where is that based on? It's got the license. It's got more information. So again, I really recommend Raw Pixel. It's got some really nice high quality designs. And again, I, I use it mostly for vintage images, but there's lots of other amazing ideas out there. Lots of different colors, lots of different high quality images. Another site that I like using is called pxhere.com. And what you can do, and, and this is kind of nice here for anybody who's watching where maybe English is not your first language. 
there's a section here on pxhere.com where you can actually change the language, which is nice. So they've really got a global setting on there that I really think is useful. Not for myself, because I happen to be an English speaker, but if you're not, that's definitely a nice idea. So you can search images here. It says free of copyrights again. So I'm going to search images. I'm going to spice it up here. I'm going to pick Santa. Okay, I'm just going to pick something at random here. And we can see here there's lots of Christmas images that come up. So, you know, it's nice here because you can sort it by popular or latest, the orientation. There's also a size filter, so you can punch in your pixels as well. You can have your not safe for work. That's what that NSFW means, not safe for work. So if I were to click that off, I might see some, hopefully not in the Christmas category, but you might see some nudity or something, right? So again, you know, you might want to have that on or off. You can also filter by color. So let's say I was looking for a Santa photo and there's 3,700 images. I could do a little bit more of a deep dive by saying, well, I'm just going to look for yellow images. And what it will do is it will use color filters and it will look for images that contain yellow images inside of it so you know it's kind of neat like this is a, again I'm not just suggesting you just take all these images and just upload them as is the idea is you're finding an image and then you're and then you're modifying it or you're adding something to it so if you've got you know funny cat sayings you know you'd pick this photo for example but you might want to crop out the background and then you'll maybe put in a retro background and then you've got like you know you know 70s cat or you know you crop out the background and you put retro cat like something like that here's a neat one little yanni cat here you know you'd crop out the background and you'd have you know i hate mondays or something right so the idea would be you're, you're not just taking the design you're taking it and you're using it in a piece of art right so anyway pxhere.com that's the name of it it's a pretty neat tool and what i really like is the filters if you're looking for something specific this could be a nice tool for you to use another site that i use quite a bit is called free svg Dot org. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. So an SGV file is a vector file. And the reason I like vectors is because they're so clean. You can basically expand them infinitely large and they don't become pixelated. They're not really a picture. They're actually a mathematical formula of a picture and they can expand infinitely large. So it's very cool. So what I use when I, when I go to this SVG site is I'll typically use things that are universal. And what I mean by that is they're easily recognizable in all languages. So for example, I would type in something like, let's say, oh, let's just use cat here as an example. And this will give me back vector files of cats. So if I wanted to do a funny shirt, what I could do is pick like, you know, for example, this cat here. I'm just going to click on his little face. The reason I like this is because it's just, if you like, if you want to do a black cat design, everybody in the world will recognize that this is a black cat. It's not artistically stylized. It's not a charcoal drawing that's vintage. It's not a computerized drawing. It's just simply a black cat because the art itself is not the subject of the t-shirt. The saying would be the subject of the t-shirt. So it can be helpful sometimes to use vectors because they're really clean. Uh, here's another one that I like. These are cats with hearts, but they're pictures of inside of a cat shape. So here's like little bubbles but it makes a cat heart so again it's very see how clean it is if you download this you could scale it up to be a huge poster or a huge canvas if you want so this meets the red bubble template or the tea bubble the tea public template really easily because it's so clean uh, it's also usually transparent background as well which is nice so it's one of these things and if you don't have um, an svg uh, software like if you're going well I can't really download an SVG that's fine there's PNG options as well and even the small PNG would still work but I would recommend try to go as large as possible when you're making your designs because you want to have high quality right so the idea here is that you could use things that are a little bit clip art design now look there's gonna be a lot of stuff on here that you might look at and go eh, it kind of looks cheesy and amateurish but you may want something 
that is not overly detailed for your purposes. Like this is something that I would use. So this vector drawing of a puppy, I like this idea because you could put a funny saying next to it and it's the picture's not going to detract from the saying. So again, I mean, it's not high art by any stretch, but it's something that you could use. Another one would be road signs. So if you're looking for, you know, a simple idea for a funny sign or a funny, um, you know, funny saying, there's lots of different road signs. So you could even just take like, for example, like this one here. Okay. So here's this one obviously means construction, right? There's a guy with a shovel. So I'm just going to click on this one. So it says workman ahead. So what you could do is take this, download it as a vector and just remove the black. So what you've got now is just a perfect triangle. And then you can put anything you want in the middle, a cat face, a skull, whatever, it doesn't matter. Right. But you can, so you don't have to use the whole design. You you know, it's really hard to draw a triangle like this and make it perfect with the exact dimensions of a road sign. So just download the SVG and then you can modify it. That's the key to being an artist is you're taking something and you're changing it, you're adding to it. So free SVG is a really nice site. There's also a license section here. So if you click on the license, you'll see it comes up where it says these are public domain images and it says, there's no copyright. There's a lot of ads on this site, unfortunately, but it says you can basically copy, modify, distribute, and perform even for commercial purposes. So again, I really like the idea of using something that's free and something that's easy to recognize. Free SVG. Okay, this next one might be kind of, it's not for everyone. So you know how we always talk about like niche marketing, right? So like this is kind of like a niche that you may be interested in and you may not be interested in and that's fine too. So I'm gonna type in our patents public domain. And a patent is when somebody invents something and they have to submit it to the United States government. I'm, I'm in Canada, but it's the United States government here for what I'm looking at. And the idea is, you know, if I come up with like a new type of toaster oven, I can patent that technology so that nobody else can use it. So the thing is about patents is the patents are published into the public domain, meaning that you could take the picture of the patent and you can make artwork from it. And it's a public domain image. The image itself is public domain. So what you would do is you type in the words here, Google patent patents, and there's a whole section here on Google just about patents. So I'll just show you just an example. So it looks like Google, you're on Google and you're like, well, what did I do? But you'll notice the website, it says TBM equals PTS, which is patents. So I'm just going to type in, um, you know, rocket. Okay. And what this does is it gives me back patents that are pictures, rocket propelled missile, rocket launcher. So I'm going to go on rocket launcher. Okay. So I'm going to click on that. And what this gives me is the U S patent for an aircraft mounted rocket launcher. Now, again, this is, this is niche, but that's the whole point of being successful on a red bubble or a T public is, is finding something and being dominating that niche. Right? So here's just, I'll just click on the example. You can download a PDF of it. And you can see here, there's the patent itself. And then there's pictures inside of the rocket launcher. Okay. So again, you might look at that and go, eh, who really cares? But I'll type in something maybe a little more, maybe a little more, um, you know, useful. So for example, high softness, high durability toilet paper. So when I click on that, this is three layer toilet paper. So it's just going to load up and this gives me a toilet paper patent. So when I click on it, it actually gives me pictures that I can use. Now, again, these are all public domain pictures. I'm not suggesting that these are, you know, instantly ready for public consumption. But the idea here would be, you know, you can have wall mounted simulated Christmas tree. So if you're looking for something vintagey, you can see here, there's a Christmas tree design. This is a wall mounted simulated Christmas tree filed in 1959. And there's the Christmas tree image.
So again, I can't take you to the promised land on this one. There are hundreds of thousands, you know, millions of patents out there. The idea is you would look up something that speaks to you and you would be able to find public domain imaging. So it's something to think about. Again, not for everybody, but this is free and you can find some really neat public domain images that may spark some creativity for some designs on your print on demand site. Okay, the last one that I'm going to show you guys is called publicdomainvectors.org. And if you're looking for that website, there's no www in front of it for some reason, but you just type in public domain vectors. Okay, and then you're going to get publicdomainvectors.org. These are royalty free clip art files and vector files. What I like about this is just there's just a ton and what I really enjoy are the different shapes. So I typically will use this to grab like crests. Like here's a great example of like, let's say you wanted to do vintage uh, travel designs. Well, here is not just a good design, but you could remove the middle of the design and just keep the crest. So now you've got a nice outline, a nice template. So if you, know, if you want to do red bubble stickers, for example, this is a great outline for a red bubble sticker. Forget about the design, put whatever you want in there. Funny saying, picture of a cat, dog, I don't care. But the, you wanna use the, the outline of it, right? So it's very easy to use. The other thing that I use this for a lot is flags. So if you type in a country's name, so let's type in a totally random country, okay? I'm gonna type in Sweden. Okay, and what'll happen is, it will give me back all sorts of results using the Swedish flag, not just the Swedish flag. There's hearts, there's a fist, there's thumbs up, there's a army guy, there's a starburst. There's all sorts of interesting crests and you know, it, it, it's endless. So I use this a lot for geographical based designs, especially something that's a bit vintagey. If you're looking for something distressed, it can be like, it looks like a bit beat up. It can be hard to create that in something like a photo, like unless you have you know, really good Photoshop skills, it can be difficult to create something or, or it's easy to create, but it could take time. And so this is just a nice example of where you can find it almost instantly right on the site. So I really like public domain vectors because you can find a lot of different designs on here that are specific to a niche. Now there's different formats as well. There's AI, which is typically used for Illustrator. There's EPS, which is, like a combination of a PNG file and a scalable vector. It's kind of like a scalable PNG in a way. And then there's also an SGV file as well. So you can also take a look at different formats that'll fit your, your, um, your technology. You know, if you have a limitation on the technology you use. So I use this quite a bit because I really enjoy doing a lot of location based designs because that to me is a niche that is super underutilized on Redbubble because there's hundreds of thousands of different locations all over the world, countries, cities, provinces, little tiny towns. And that's where a lot of the sales can come from. You're not going to get a ton of them. Like you're not going to get hundreds of thousands of people buying a, a tiny town design but you will get a dedicated base and you'll probably own that entire niche. So anyway, just some ideas here for you guys. I hope you found that helpful. As always, please do hit that like, subscribe button. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys found this helpful.